the world of boxing has seen some pretty incredible wins, but there's two sides to one coin. At the same time that a boxer has celebrated his win, another boxer had just lost their legacy, maybe giving up an entire history of undefeated boxing. In today's video, we're going to be going over the times where boxers have defeated other boxers who were undefeated until that point. First up, Mike Tyson vs Buster Douglas this event had everyone buzzing. Billed as Tyson is back, it was a professional boxing match that took place at the Tokyo Dome on 11th of February of 1990. Tyson was the undefeated heavyweight champion of the world going into the fight, and his popularity was off the charts. On the other hand, Buster Douglas was ranked number 7 heavyweight according to Ring Magazine, and was met with mixed success in the boxing ring. As soon as the fight started though, it was clear that Douglas was not afraid. He put his quick and accurate jab to prevent Tyson getting inside where he was more dangerous. The earlier rounds transpired without much action, but Douglas did manage to land a nice uppercut on Tyson's chin at the end of the second round. Tyson did manage to return with a punishing left to the body that had Douglas momentarily confused and looking at his corner. The middle rounds were dominated by Douglas. Tyson did manage to sneak in a few of his signature uppercuts, but he was dealt a deadly right during the fifth round that left him wobbly. The real issue was the incompetence of Tyson's cornerman, who was so sure that he'd win the fight that they didn't bring any ice packs along and Tyson was already losing vision in his swollen left eye. Towards the end of the eighth round, Tyson managed to send Douglas to the canvas, but the victorious moment was short-lived as Douglas was on his feet in no time. Tyson got punished in the ninth round and he barely made it out. Finally, in the 10th round, Douglas landed an uppercut that shocked Tyson. This was followed by a few more hits that sent him down for the first time in his career. In what came to be known as the biggest upsets in boxing history, Douglas came out as the undisputed heavyweight champion. Up next, Evander Holyfield vs Lennox Lewis II. Holyfield was the undisputed heavyweight champion and had a record of 35 to 3. He was considered one of the best boxers of his generation. Both the fighters had just met eight months prior where the bout was declared a draw, even though most think that the fight was in Lewis's favor. The fighters agreed to a rematch with a purse of $30 million being split evenly between them. Things played out a little like their earlier fight. Lewis had the upper hand initially, dominating the first and second round. The third round was a little bit of a mix, as two judges had it for Lewis, while one was in favor of Holyfield, which was because of him landing a hard right to Lewis's head. The next four rounds were a blur for Lewis, as Holyfield knocked them out of the park. The seventh round, then, proved to be quite entertaining, as the two fighters went all out in the middle of the ring during the last 20 seconds, landing several punches. Lewis came back harder than ever and took control of the next four rounds. The two fighters fought a closely battled round 12, but Lewis came out stronger, winning over two of the judges. Lewis won a unanimous decision, and after nearly seven years, he became the first undisputed heavyweight champion in the 13th of November, 1999. And now, George Foreman vs Muhammad Ali. The Rumble in the Jungle was a heavyweight championship fight at the May Stadium on the 30th of October, 1974. Ali had a name for himself because of his incredible speed and technical skills, whereas Foreman was popular for his brute strength. Ali started off by trying to disorient Foreman by throwing right-hand lead punches. Even though he managed to land some shots, it didn't have much of an effect on Foreman, so Ali changed tactics. Ali put into action his rope dope which had a key objective, and that was to sap Foreman of energy, and he did exactly that. To add to this, Ali had made the most out of every chance he had by landing punches at Foreman's face. After round after round of this, Foreman began wearing out. He took a lot of damage to the face and even started staggering in the fourth and fifth round. As the fight made its way to the eighth round, it was apparent that Foreman was getting sloppy with both defensive and offensive. And that's given if you're on the receiving end of Muhammad Ali's punches. Foreman stumbled to the canvas after a left hook from Ali that brought Foreman's face up, followed by a hard right. The referee signaled the end of the fight even though Foreman made an attempt to get back onto his feet, and Ali led on all scorecards, marking a great upset in the history of the sport. Up next, Roy Jones Jr. vs Antonio Tarver. The fight between the two boxers was billed, now it's personal, and took place on 8th of November of 2003. In March of the same year, Roy Jones Jr. picked up a victory over John Ruiz and Jones came out as the WBA heavyweight champion. Now the other titles were vacated and so Antonio Tarva met Montel Griffin, former WBC light heavyweight champion, to determine the man for the titles. 
Tava dominated him throughout the fight and came out on top. Ultimately, Jones decided to return to light heavyweight and challenged Tava. Because of this, he appeared weaker after he had shed some weight to meet the weight class. But still, Jones managed to snag himself a majority decision victory even though Tava performed a lot better than a lot of people were expecting. Jones landed a higher percentage of punches compared to Tava who landed more punches overall but didn't connect with as many. Towards the end of the fight, Jones was bleeding from the nose and his left eye was swollen so Tava ended up doing some pretty decent damage to the guy. The fight went to the judges' cards and one had it for a draw while the other two had it clearly in favor of Jones. Moving on. Canelo Alvarez vs Gennady Golovkin II This fight is one of the more recent examples where Canelo Alvarez beat Gennady Golovkin by a majority decision victory. The fight took place on the 15th of September of 2018 and was billed as the final judgment. Both of them had fought in the previous September and the match had been a draw so it was time to settle the dust. Alvarez came into the fight more aggressive than the previous one. Both fighters took it slow in the first round, trying to get an idea of the style. The next two rounds though, Canelo dominated, landing explosive shots to the body and the head. The two rounds following that, Golovkin came out as more active, especially in the fourth round where he landed more punches than the Mexican. Canelo took control in the next three rounds landing very hard punches and Golovkin struggled to adapt to the aggression. Rounds 9, 10 and 11 saw Golovkin shine as Canelo seemed to have worn himself out and Golovkin managed to stun him a few times. Canelo started out strong in the 10th round, but Golovkin managed to land the hardest punch, hurting Canelo. In the second to last round, Canelo lost his aggression while Golovkin powered up to meet him on the ropes. In the final round, then, both fighters slugged it out, trying to land as many shots as they could. Canelo reigned on top. The fight proved to be controversial and the two fighters arranged a rematch very recently as their rivalry reignited. Golovkin believed that he won both the previous encounters, whereas Canelo was just furious that most fans tend to side with that argument. It wasn't close with Canelo securing round after round, spare the first. Golovkin picked up a little bit of steam, but it wasn't enough to seal the deal. The final round was the big deciding factor, and Golovkin knew he had to do something big. But he needed a KO, and he didn't get what he asked for. The bout was scored in favor of Canelo. All of the super middleweight world belt titles were on the line that day. And that was a bit of a bonus for you all. All of these fights go to show that anything at all can happen in the ring and that's exactly what makes boxing such an interesting and exciting sport. And with that all said, that will be all for today's video. Drop a like if you enjoyed and consider subscribing for more content like this. Thank you for joining us as always, you've been fantastic and we'll see you in the next video.